according to the owner's manual, the tank on an XR650L holds 2.77 U.S. gallons, with six tenths of that being reserved. The problem is that 0.6 gallons is not always capable of reaching the inner fuel pickup down here on the left side of the tank. Therefore, you only can use 2.1 gallons out of the tank. You go on reserve at about 85 miles with this configuration that comes stock on the bike and you run out of fuel at around 115 miles. So you've got a couple options and most people go out and buy a different fuel tank and most of those people are going to think they're going to travel at least long distances in unknown areas and want a 200 mile range. Now if that's what you're going to do by all means, you should go out and spend the money and buy a bigger fuel tank because this isn't going to increase your range all that much. But if you want to use your stock tank and if you want to increase your range out to about 145 miles and use the entire amount of gasoline that you put in it, then this modification you'll find may help you. There are pictures of this modification online, but it takes some searching to find and I thought I'd explain it and show it in a little bit more in depth in a video. On this motorcycle the frame runs through the fuel tank. The fuel tank actually goes down on either side of the frame and the fuel petcock is on the left side of the gas tank. So the fuel goes to the carburetor from the bottom of the left side of the gas tank ending up leaving six tenths of gasoline unused in the right side of the fuel tank. Of course, you could tip the motorcycle over on its left side to drain the fuel over from the right side to the left, but that's very inconvenient and actually unsafe at times. What I have is a 21 inch piece of plastic tubing. It's 3 16 of an inch inside diameter. And I've placed a piece of copper tubing on this end to give it some weight on this end. I've drilled a hole through both the plastic and the copper piece of tubing and I've pinned it with a small piece of copper wire. And the reason I'm using copper for both the weight and the pin is because it's going inside of a steel tank and this is non-ferrous metal. It won't spark if it slaps around in here. And the extra plastic I put on here is just so that it doesn't make any noise while I'm bouncing down the trail. The weight is going to hold it down inside the tank and it works pretty well as you'll find out if you do this modification. What we'll do is we're going to take apart the petcock as you'll see and we'll place this piece of tubing down over the fuel pickup and we'll place this side over in the bottom in the lowest point of the right hand side of the fuel tank. When you're riding the bike the right hand side of the fuel tank will be where your fuel is being picked up out of. When it actually runs dry, your reserve will still work because it's located on the left side and it comes off of a different fuel pickup at the bottom of the tank. But it'll completely drain the right side using the tube, the reserve will completely drain the left side, and you'll completely use the contents of your fuel tank rather than leaving six tenths of a gallon in the tank. To take the fuel tank off, we're going to have to take the seat off. To take the seat off, we have to take out these two bolts underneath of the seat. So let's do that. They're 12 millimeter bolts, so we'll go ahead and take those off. With those two bolts out, the seat should come off. There's one more bolt to take off and that's a 10 millimeter head on it and we'll use a wrench on that so we don't break the paint here on the seam. So we'll take that out. Our tank will then be loose from the motorcycle but we'll still have to take the fuel line off before we remove it. Before we remove the fuel tank we have to disconnect the fuel line. You certainly want to have it shut off. So mine is shut off here. I want to remove the clamp on the hose pull that back with the pliers. A lot of times it helps if you turn that a little bit or get it to turn before try taking it off. Now there could be a little bit of fuel that comes out of there so you want to be ready for that. Have a rag or something with you. 
sometimes it helps to push that off with a screwdriver somewhat, but you don't want to tear up the hose. Okay, the fuel line is off. You'll want to plug that hose with something clean so contaminants don't get into your fuel system. So we'll plug that off. At this point our fuel tank should be ready to come off. We want to be careful not to hit anything on the way off. My tank is full of gasoline so it's fairly heavy. So lift it off and we're ready to drain the tank. We've slipped a piece of fuel line onto the petcock and we've turned it to reserve so that we can drain the fuel out into a gas can. We'll have to tip our main fuel tank eventually on its side so that the fuel on the right side comes over to the left side and we can completely evacuate the tank of gasoline before removing the petcock. Okay, we'll lay the tank on its side now to take the fuel sediment ball off. It's a good time to do it. You want to clean that out. We've got to get it off of there anyway. So we'll take that off and see what's in it and clean it out. Well. There appears to be some grime in it, so we will remove this and blow it out lightly with some compressed air. With a fine little pick or a tweezer, there's an o-ring in here that you have to remove first. Then the sediment screen should pull out after that. You can see the sediment that's on here that's prevented from going up into your fuel line. So that's how the sediment bowl works. The fuel comes in and drops down here but it has to go up and through the screen before it comes out and goes into your carburetor. So that's the filtering system you're going to be left with when we're done with this modification. Okay, remember how the O-ring goes in. It's angled on the one side and that side points down when you put it in. So remember that. I've cleaned off the little sediment screen and cleaned out the sediment bowl. I'm ready to take the petcock out. For that I'm going to use a 24 millimeter wrench. and that's what that looks like. This is the brass tube we're going to fit that piece of fuel line down over the top of. Now there's some other components inside of here that we have to take out as well. There's a small black o-ring and another fuel filter screen that fits down over the top of this tube. So we have to pull that out now. Again we're going to use a little pick to get this o-ring started coming out because the tube won't come out until you take that off. Okay, we've got this little o-ring started here. I'm going to pop that off. I put it down in the order that it came out. Now I need to extract this piece of tubing. I use the flare pen to insert into this tube and to wiggle it back and forth before pulling it out. I also used the needle nose pliers after rocking it for some time and pulled on it, but I did that gently. This is worth $38 from Honda, so you don't want to break it, and you'll want to keep it in case you want to put the bike back to stock sometime. So be gentle with that. The type of screen that is in the sediment bowl on this plastic tube. But be gentle with that. Rock it to get it out of there. It's in a little rubber collar, but it will come out. You're not going to use this with the modification, but you will want to keep it and store it in a safe place in case you want to put your system back to stock. I've threaded a piece of mechanics wire through my piece of tubing, and I'm inserting it through the top 
where the fuel cap is. And I'm going to bring it out the bottom here, as you can see. And the reason I need to do that is because it's too big to put the end on that I have the piece of copper tubing on. So I'm bringing it out the bottom. Once I have it through, I can take the wire out. I'm going to squirt some penetrating fluid up into my piece of tubing. And now I'm going to insert my petcock up into the piece of tubing. It's a tight fit and I've got it on there about an inch and a quarter and that should be fine. Now I'm going to go ahead and put it in the rest of the way, get the nuts started on there, and then we'll tighten things up. Okay, we've got this threaded on all the way by hand. We're going to take that 24 millimeter wrench and just snug it up. When you have this all together later, you're going to want to check and make sure there aren't any leaks. You can still tighten things up when it's on the bike. Okay, we're tight there. We're going to put our small sediment screen back in there that lines up over a piece of tubing. We're going to install our rubber o-ring back in there with the angled shoulder down. We're going to tamp that back up in there. Then we're going to thread our sediment bowl back in here. Again, you'll want to check everything for leaks when you have it back together. This takes a 10 millimeter wrench. Hang on to things. I've got a six point wrench here so I don't mess up the metal on it. Just be gentle with everything and know what you're doing as you snug it up. What I'm going to do next is tip the tank over and I'm going to make sure that hose is laying on the right side of my tank down in the bottom. I'm going to look inside the tank and make sure that that's where it's at. You'll be able to look inside the filler neck here and see the piece of tubing and you'll be able to see that it's on the right side of the tank. Now it may move around in there a little bit but when you put gasoline in there it's going to pretty well stay put at the bottom. If you don't like it you don't have to use it. But what you'll find is that once you fill the tank for the first time, the siphoning action will begin. You want to fill it up all the way first to a full tank of fuel. And then, since it has to come up over the spine of the frame, the tube will fill up with fuel and you'll be able to start your bike. Thereafter, it doesn't matter where the tank level is. It'll work just fine. Remember, you always have the fail-safe of going back to reserve here. If anything would come apart inside the tank, you can always switch it back to reserve and it'll draw off the bottom of the left side of the tank. You can still tip the bike over, dump the tank fuel from the right side to the left side. You've always got a fail-safe system here. If your tubing were to split, were to come off, anything like that were to happen, you'll always get home just as you always would have through reserve. I failed to mention that you can also put a little fuel filter on the end of that hose if you want, but you have a screen there as I showed you on that sediment trap, the sediment bowl, and that should take care of you fine. I've ridden for 4,000 miles with this assembly and I've had no problems. So I want to thank you for watching. I hope it works well for you.